So hello, I'm Tommy Dillon from Northumbria University and our pictorial is about an interview study that involved asking adoptive parents about life storybooks. Life storybooks are created by adoption agencies to support the well-being of adopted children. Our findings show the importance of photos and visual communication in supporting communicative openness within adoptive families and we suggest through these findings that supportive tools could help with visual communication and the cu curation of media for life storybooks. Narratives that shape our identity and sense of self are formed within and carried by our families throughout childhood. Those of us who have lived securely with our parents throughout our lives have shared stories about personal experiences that are processed, edited, reinterpreted and retold. Whereas for adopted children this process can be more complicated they may have had multiple different homes and carers, which means their history can be lost or fragmented because it's not coherently carried throughout their lives. And this is where life storybooks come in. Life storybooks are, in their simplest form, a tool for storing and sharing a child's early life in an accessible way. As you might expect, a life storybook generally consists of photos, illustrations and words that provide a chronology of a child's life up to adoption. The book should provide answers to questions a child might find difficult to ask and importantly in our pictorial they can become a tool for parent-child interaction that builds empathy for the child, helps the parent communicate early life, talk about birth family and broader concepts around adoption and family structures. In this pictorial we draw on two concepts. Communicative openness is the extent to which information is shared openly within an adoptive family. Socio-genealogical connectedness is the extent to which a child can identify with their birth parents. Regardless of circumstances, evidence suggests this is about processing adequate and favourable information that is shared throughout a child's life. The better we are at sharing and communicating, the more likely a child is to feel a connection with birth family, which in turn supports a more coherent identity. Through our findings, we show ways that photos can support both concepts and point towards a more nuanced understanding of the importance of photos in life storybooks. Now, despite the value of life storybooks, there is evidence of a lack of consistency and a common topic in the adoption community is how unhappy people are with their child's book. This research through design project is motivated by personal experience. I am an adoptive parent and it occurred to me that these books can be so much more if we get designers involved in helping to understand how they could better support adopted children and their families and this pictorial is one step towards unpacking what this design space could look like. For more detail on our study design please see our pictorial but in short I personally interviewed 11 UK based adopters about their life storybooks. The interviews were structured around four core themes. Their initial response to the life storybooks received by the adoption agency, details about any edits or new versions they had created, and how they used or intended to use the book. We also posted associated materials that were designed to ensure participants had the opportunity to revisit and reflect on life storybooks prior to the interview. Now given the sensitive nature of life storybooks, we told the doctors they did not have to show us their child's book on the Zoom call, but could if they wanted. And it turned out during our analysis to be really helpful to sketch from unrelated photos to recreate and explore some of what the adopters were describing or had shown us. And the pictorial itself pulls some of this together along with other images that have been created or chosen to support our findings and principally the emotion and meaning being conveyed to children. In relation to images, more generally, often we were shown clip art that participants felt had been chosen for the sake of sticking a picture on. So without much care and attention, messages conveyed by these illustrations were seen as confusing or had the potential to negatively influence the story being told. If we're looking at communicative openness and empathy, then in the words of one participant, this image on the left has the potential to incite shame, especially when it's presented on the page as a representation of birth dad. And on the right, this participant felt the image was untruthful because they did not see birth mum as a cosy motherly figure and the story was not life and light and fluffy. Clearly a significant challenge is balancing favourable information, empathy and at the same time conveying the truth. Throughout our interviews, participants talked about the importance of photos 
over and above illustrations and text, and this became a principal focus of our analysis. For example, one participant had been compelled to change their child's book and used photos instead of clip art. Photos here were seen as more personal and a more truthful way of um, showing those involved in the adoption process. And clip art, on the other hand, tends to have these exaggerated meanings that present messages that happen to be incidental to the story being told. Whereas photos were seen as more neutral and did not tell the child what to feel. So I'm gonna show some examples of the role of photos in relation to the concepts we showed earlier. There's of course more detail in the pictorial and further examples. So please, if you want to learn more about this, go and have a look. Um, one participant talked about how important it was their child knew that birth family loved them. And again, this is an important part of socio-genealogical connectedness. They expressed the power of a single photo in communicating this emotion to the child over and above any written sentiment. And there can be some exertion of power in any life storybook, in any children's story. And this is something evidenced by other researchers. Here we suggest a photo like this has a strong sense of honesty as evidence for the child. Contextual information of photos is important when connecting with birth family. Here we show with the help of one participant, the way in which a photo can bring a connection with birth dad to a personal experience. This participant explained the relationship between a photo and going to a football match. This is one of only three pictures we've got of our son and his dad, and it was nice to see. Oh wow, this is a team my dad sports and we're visiting. That really meant a lot to him, to go and see them play, and the photo is something special. And finally here, like before, another participant expressed regret that the adoption agency had not included a photo of birth mum with her child and her snuggly. That in the words of this participant, this was a missed opportunity to link with her now because this is her favourite teddy and she sleeps with it every night. Given what we know about the role of things in representing important relationships through associated narratives that reflect memories, emotions and meanings, we suggest such photos provide precedent to the adopted child that can support this kind of emotional connection and become a means of facilitating conversation about birth parents in everyday life. So throughout the pictorial, we point to various roles played by photos in relation to communicative openness. We argue that greater care and attention to the use of photos and illustrations is essential. Referenced materials for life storybooks rarely include photos or detailed representations like we have shown here. Reese, for example, which is commonly cited, uses these vague outlines to suggest where photos might go. Given our findings and what we've shown today, we suggest that further, more detailed study could allow designers to create visual guides that include photos as a means of encouraging a more nuanced appreciation of the role that photos play. In relation to illustrations, we do provide some examples where visual communication could be drawn on to address some of the challenges. In relation to the image on the right, empathy is important, and this means ensuring the image is solely used to support a child's understanding. This could be done by using a photo that is less demeaning and more descriptive, visually delineating the image from birth dad and using a caption to depersonalize it to a factual statement. And finally then, we also discussed the potential for a custom made, curated and searchable database of stock images to support those making life storybooks. With further research, this could build on and include some of these guidelines. For example, here we show some neutral illustrations of the judge and some suggestions for how you might choose an illustration. The aim would be to achieve some consistency across life storybooks by helping those making the books to consider the role of each image in more detail, rather than selecting images for the sake of sticking a picture on.